Welcome to Prophecy Countdown with author and pastor Kenneth Baer. Join us every week for the latest updates on what the Bible has to say about the events, the characters, and prophetic signs of the return of Jesus Christ and His coming kingdom. Make sure you not only subscribe, but like your favorite episodes and share it with your friends. Now, on with the broadcast. So welcome today to our weekly Prophecy Update. I'm Pastor Ken with Prophecy Countdown. We provide two updates each week. Um, on this channel, which is uh, seen both in video and heard in audio as well. Now, on Sundays, we're presently going through the Gospel of, of Matthew. And as our, uh, as our custom is, we go by every book, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And we pull out the prophecy within the Gospel of Matthew. We see all kinds of prophecy in the Gospel of Matthew. In fact, 25% of the entire Bible is prophecy. So there's, there's, no, uh, there's no possibility of running out of opportunities. Now on Wednesdays, our, pro our updates are very specifically prophecy updated. Uh, we get the questions, uh, our topics on Wednesday from you, uh, the viewing and listening audience. Uh, as you send in questions to us, we love to respond to those. In fact, I respond to every single email myself personally. So every email that comes in gets an answer. And uh, if you have a question, likely other people have the same question. And that's how we have our questions on Prophecy Countdown. So to uh, email us, our email address is on Gmail. It's prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. That's prophecycountdownpodcast. That's our name at gmail.com. And uh, that's, again, how we get our questions. Now, our lesson today came in from a question we received on a question on the second beast uh, that's found in the book of Revelation. It's actually from the 13th chapter of Revelation. I'll read it to you. Um, and that's our, our message for today, the second beast of the apocalypse. Uh, verse, uh, verse 11 in chapter 13 has this initial reference of this second beast. It says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a, a dragon. So today we'll, we'll take a look at these, uh, this sinister, sinister character along with the sinister character we know as the Antichrist that are referenced in the book of Revelation. Now we have no reason to believe that these individuals that are referenced in Revelation, the second beast, the first beast, the dragon, uh, are to be taken strictly symbolically. Not at all. Uh, they're depicted by symbols, but they are, they are real people. Uh, we believe that these individuals are, are living human beings that are given power, to, uh, satanic power or demonic power through Satan. And, and, and this role of this second beast is to both support the Antichrist as well as to lead. And one of the things that he leads is what we know as the end time one world religion. That's the end time one world religion. Now, I, as, I refer, as I mentioned, there's a number of references to this individual, not only chapter 13, verse 11, but then it goes on. So, so chapter 13, chapter 16, chapter 19, and 20 all have something to say about this, this second beast of the book of Revelation, which is also known as the false prophet. Now, it's Satan, remember, that empowers these individuals. They're human beings like you and I, except that they are empowered by Satan to do his bidding. These three individuals, by the way, the, the Antichrist, which is the beast we see out of the, the sea, the, this uh, second beast, which is the one coming out of the earth, and then the, uh, and Satan himself, um, uh, form what we know as the unholy trinity. Again, mimicking uh, God, the, the, the trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that we know and worship and adore, the creators of the heaven and the earth, the ones that control all things, the three in one, uh, Satan uh, imitates it and mimics it with this unholy trinity. So let's, uh, let's see what the Apostle John has to say about this. There's actually quite a few clues in this very one verse, 1311. First, we, we see that this, this beast comes out of the earth. Uh, the Antichrist comes out of the sea, but the second brute beast comes out of the earth. Now, to scholars, this can mean a, a number of things. Uh, for one of them, it is that uh, he may be coming out of the pit of hell. Um, all the demonic powers of hell at his command. It could also mean that he comes out of lowly circumstances. The idea of being in the earth, he's, a, he's an earthly man. He's a humble man. He's uh, one known as, as uh, from, uh, from very humble origins. Now, he's depicted as having two horns like a lamb, but speaking like a dragon. Well, scholars have had 2,000 years to take a look at this scripture, and, and they find that the horns of, of lambs 
are merely, are merely small bumps on their heads. And the lamb grows as the lamb grows into a, a ram. They're small little bumps. Now, rather than having the Antichrist duplicity of heads, 10 heads and 10 horns on each head, it's, a, it's, just, it's just two horns like a lamb. But remember, who is the lamb? Well, Jesus Christ is the lamb of God. So this gives us an indication of the messianic feature, uh, the, 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 the spiritual leading of the second beast. Now, it, it could be that this individual is an extraordinary preacher or orator uh, who somehow demonically empowered um, and his words will reach the, the multitudes. Um, he speaks like a dragon, which means that his message is the message of a dragon. Revelation 12, 9 identifies the dragon, of course, as, as Satan. So this is the message of Satan. Now the second piece, is this false prophet leads a world religion that, that, uh, that leads in the worship of the Antichrist. The final world religion is, is called Babylon in the book of Revelation. And the image of this false prophet is the woman seated on the scarlet beast. And I'm taking that from Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. You know, it's interesting. I, I spent a number of years in, in Europe, and this image of a woman on a beast is frequently used by the European Union, headquartered in Brussels. It can be found on the official Euro coins. It's on a postage stamp. Um, it's on a statue right outside the EU headquarters in Brussels. You can go ahead and see this. You can look it up on the internet. Uh, this is why one reason why many scholars, including myself, believe that Europe will have a significant role in the end times. We're going to see these, these ten nations possibly coming directly out of, out of Europe, uh, the old Roman Empire. Now, the Bible says that an image of the Antichrist is set up likely in the temple in Jerusalem, which is to be built at some time either before or during the, the tribulation period. And the false prophet causes the image to, to come alive. Let me read to you the rest of chapter 13 of Revelation, uh, beginning now in verse 12. Verse 12 says, And he, this is the false prophet, exercises all authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven and on earth in the sight of men. Sounds like Elijah, doesn't it? And he decides those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he had granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He, has grant, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the beast to be killed. You know, it would seem like fantasy when many people read this, this image of the beast that comes to life is now commonplace. If you visit uh, Disney or Epcot, I mean, you can see these Imagineers uh, causing uh, individual statues and, and likenesses of men to look like they come alive. Um, many scholars see the references here to the false prophet, the worship of the Antichrist and the presence of a temple in Jerusalem during the tribulation indicate a convergence, get this, a convergence of the major Abrahamic faiths. Uh, that's Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Now, all of those religions, Judaism, is, Christianity, and Islam, all anticipate the coming of a messianic figure. In fact, if you read eschatology, which is the study of last things, from the perspective of these individual religions, you'll see a tremendous amount of commonality. So, for example, in Christianity, this figure, of course, is, is Jesus Christ, who we anticipate coming, uh, both in the rapture of the church, but then also in his second coming. In Judaism, the Messiah is awaited as the future hope. The Jews are looking for the Messiah. We are looking for the second coming. It's the same individual. In Islam, there is the belief of both the return of Jesus, who they call Isa, and the Islamic El Mahdi, who they believe to come and will be descendant of the prophet Muhammad. But the second beast is not satisfied in setting up a new worldwide religion. Let me read to you beginning in verse 16. Verse 16, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. You know, it's the second beast that actually causes people to take the mark of the beast. It's, people think it's the Antichrist. Well, the Antichrist is definitely involved, but it's the second beast, the false prophet, that requires everyone to take the beast. You know, many people saw... Uh, the recent vaccine, vaccine mandates, and I'm by no means a fan of vaccines, uh, during the recent pandemic as the mark of the beast. 
And and I I, I understand their, their their thinking, but here's the thing: uh, there's no beast yet. If there's no beast, there's no mark of the beast. The vaccine can't possibly be anything but a forerunner of what the mark of the beast actually looks like. Now, the end of the Antichrist, as well as the false prophet, uh, is 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 certain. Um, after a few years, a brief reign of over seven years, the Bible clearly states that when Jesus returns to the earth with the armies of heaven, and by the way, that includes all of the saints in heaven, he consumes the Antichrist with the breath of his mouth and destroys with the brightness of his coming. That's Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Now, however, it's the second beast, this false prophet, um, that basically t um, leads uh, the deception and the deception and the final apostasy of what we know as the final one world religion. The whole world will be caught up with it. It's not just a few. It's really the whole world. The deceivers and false teachers we see today are, are the forerunners uh, of what we see the Antichrist and the false prophet. And we have to be careful. We, cannot, we should not be deceived. We have to be very careful about false prophets and being deceived. These false teachers are all around. They're moving among us uh, until this final satanic kingdom emerges. Um, we must faithfully proclaim that Jesus is Lord and spend time in the Bible and reaching out to reach the souls, uh, reach the hearts and minds of the people around us to be able to fulfill the Great Commission before the coming of the Lord. Now, one of the hardest things for the believer living in the period just prior to the coming of the, the coming tribulation, the second coming of Jesus Christ, will be dealing uh, with deception. I don't believe it's any coincidence at all that, you know, starting around 2019, we started hearing the, new, the, the word fake news. We knew exactly what that meant because we know that turning on the TV and listening to these talking heads is, is often listening to fake news. It's come to the point that you really can't believe almost literally anything that you're hearing anymore because there's, there's so much deception out there. And it doesn't come from one side of the political divide. It's both sides. Those supporting a cause or, or a government action aside, science experts, those opposing the same, they're all talking heads and they will deceive you. Deception is rampant today and it's one of the signs of the, of the end times. For the believer, my friends, for the believer, Jesus gives us same, some hope that we will not be deceived. In Matthew chapter 24, what's known as the Olivet Discourse, Jesus gives us this promise. He says, for false Christ and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. If possible, meaning that it is not possible to deceive the elect during, especially during the time of the tribulation. Now, again, this verse is referring to the believers that are still present during the actual tribulation, uh, but I believe it also provides some protection for us as well. If you have the Spirit of God living in you, you will not be deceived. You will be able to see the, 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 through the half-truth. So remember, a half-truth is still a whole lie. Um, so be careful, my friend, and be smart and understand that deception is all around us. The Antichrist will come to power through deception. I believe that many of the problems that the Antichrist will promise to solve were problems uh, that he props up himself. This is what politicians do all the time. They, they create a problem in order to solve the very problem. It's going to be politicians, government bureaucrats, bureaucrats, organization leaders. They all frequently use this as their way of gaining power, and the Antichrist will not be any different. Fortunately for the, for the elect uh, who are present during the tribulation, Jesus gives assurances that they will not be deceived. So, amen and amen, my brothers and sisters. Uh, we should all be praying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Let me pray. Father God, I want to thank you, Lord. For Nearly every day, it's common to see, read, or hear something about the end of the world, the apocalypse, or end times. Author and pastor Kenneth Baer's The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom zooms in and breaks down biblical prophecy as it relates to Jesus' imminent return and the coming seven-year period, including the Great Tribulation. Available in both paperback and Kindle versions. Get your copy on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble and select Christian bookstores. The title again is The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom. You can also find it listed by author Kenneth Baer. Get your copy today. Thank you for joining us on Prophecy Countdown with Pastor Ken Baer. Don't leave without first sharing the latest episode with your friends. Be sure to join us again for the latest updates on Prophecy Countdown.